Okay, so in this video we want to go over uh, what it means that, that a linear demand function and what the formula is and how in economics we can graph out uh, the demand curve given, given one formula. Okay, so we don't have to write out all the P's and all the quantity demanded. So we can just do a formula and then kind of uh, uh, create, create the demand curve. So before we start, I want to go over just a little refresher on uh, how to find, how to draw a line. Okay, and a lot of you remember it as uh, using the slope-intercept okay, slope intercept formula. And so uh, you can probably rattle this off. You've had this a while ago. So slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b, where the m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. Okay? Now, in economics... Okay, so this will get you a, a line. Let me go back. So the slope tells us the steepness of the line. Uh, the sign in front of the slope, uh, we're assuming since it's not written that it's positive, and that would be a positive slope. Uh, if there were a negative in front of it, then we would have a negative slope like that. Uh, now the B is the, the y-intercept, so you'd come over here. If, if x is 0, then uh, that zeroes all that out, and we just find out where the y is over here. Uh, where the y-intercept is. So in economics, the demand function is a little bit different. All right, so the quantity demanded equals A minus B times the price. All right, so let me get some different colors here. Sorry about that. Uh, so in this formula, this y-intercept now becomes the A. And the A, because the, in, in economics, they flip the quantity. In, in normal math, uh, the quantity would be on the y-axis and the price would be on the x-axis, but uh, in economics it's opposite. And so what we're looking at, this A is going to represent the x-intercept, okay, where where the line crosses the, the, the horizontal axis when this is zero. All right, so the A is the x-intercept, B is the slope, okay, so that, that doesn't change. Uh, and the sign in front is negative. And it's negative because, remember, almost every single demand curve, except for some theoretical ones, are, are downward sloping curve. And so this negative in this formula tells us that this would be a downward sloping curve. All right? And then the P here is the price. Okay? And that would be our, our variable that we're looking at that we can plug in then we can get the quantity demanded. And so uh, it, it's a little bit different, it's a little bit backwards than you're used to thinking. Uh, but this is the formula, uh, QD equals A minus BP. And so what we're going to do in this video is uh, plot it out, and then we're going to look at what happens when we change this variable, all right, the, the x-intercept, and then what happens when the slope changes. And so uh, that's, that's what we're going to do with this one. So let me go ahead and erase this we can kind of start clean all right so we'll go ahead and write it back up here again the the demand function is a, a minus b times the price all right and so let's just take an example uh let's say the quantity demanded equals 60 minus 5p all right so the a is 60 so we know the x-intercept is 60 uh, 5 is B, that's the slope, and then we're going to plug in the price. We're just going to rattle off some prices and see what happens to the quantity demanded. All right, and so let's just draw it out. Sorry, that's a terrible line. Uh, draw it out. So we have the price and the quantity demanded. So the easiest when you're plotting out a line is to make uh, the intercept, make the make it so we find know the x-intercept. And so if the price is zero. We know the quantity demanded is 60. Uh, if the price goes to $2, so we're going to plug in $2 here for the price. And so 5 times 2 is 10. So we would have 60 minus 10. And so at a price of $2, the quantity demanded would be 60 minus 10, which is 50. All right. At a price of $4, we can do the same thing. Uh, at a price of $4, 5 times 4 is 20. And so 60 minus 20 is 40. All right, now we're doing is uh, coming up with the price of 6, 8, 10, and 12. These are the ones we're going to use. And then we're just plugging the price in up here to this equation, the 60 minus 5p. All right, and so that would be 30 and 20 and 10 and 0. Now, what we want to do is to 
remember this is also called a once we plot all this out this is a demand schedule uh, so what we want to do is plot the curve so at a price of zero 60 would be demanded at a price of two dollars 50 would be demanded at a price of four dollars 40 would be demanded at a price of six dollars 30 eight dollars 20 ten dollars 10 and twelve dollars uh, zero so whatever this product is if the price went up to 12 bucks nobody would want it if it were free 60 people would want it or they would demand 60 of them and so this is our demand curve so given this function this demand function up here QD equals 60 minus 5P we can plug in any price that we want uh, and figure out what the quantity demanded is and then from that we can draw it out okay so that's the first part that we want to look at now the question is what's going to happen uh, if this number changes okay uh, this is the basically X intercept and so let's draw another one if the X intercept changes then what's going to happen and uh, I was speaking with a math teacher uh, told me to remind all the students that uh, to remember their parent function okay if 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 the intercept changes what's going to happen so what if instead of 60 this were now 50 all right and so let's let me redraw this just so it's a little bit cleaner so now it's 50 minus 5p all right and so at a price of zero our quantity demanded is 50 all right because that becomes zero uh, at a price of two dollars, so that's five times two, which is ten. Fifty minus ten is forty. All right, then thirty, twenty, ten, and zero. All right, and so all I did was I did this price, so two dollars. Plug the two in up there, which got me the forty, and I plug the four in up here. It's five times four, and I plug the six in. Six times five is thirty. Fifty minus thirty is twenty. Okay, so that's how we got that demand schedule. So now we want to plot these two all right and so at a price of zero 50 are going to want it at a price of two dollars 40 at a price of four dollars sorry at a price of four dollars uh, we want 30 at a price of six dollars it would be 20 at a price of eight dollars it would be 10 and a price of ten dollars would be zero and so you can see that what what exactly happens to this line it just shifts to the left and so uh, as this number as the a decreases the, there's a sh the line shifts to the left if this number went up to 80 you know we could do it out here uh, and there'd be 80 here and the number would start and it would just go like that okay so we could plot out a bunch of different ones all right so that's what's going to happen if that letter if that number changes all right the other one we want to look at is what's going to happen if the slope changes all right <coughs> excuse me uh, so the slope remember is this B so let me clean all this up real quick because it is getting kind of messy and oops clean that up All right, so let's get our formula back up here remember QD equals a minus BP and our problem was 60 minus 5p and so the question is what's going to happen if that changes and so if that 5 goes to a 10 what's going to happen to the slope of this line is it going to get steeper like this or is it going to get flatter like that okay so let's just work through it and see what happens uh, so you can kind of see for yourself all right let's put the price back in there so let's say instead of five let's make it 60 minus 10p all right and so let's increase this number and so you can take a guess and see what happens and let's see if you're right uh, so the price of zero again we're still at 60 at a price of two dollars so that's 60 minus 10 times two okay because we're plugging in this two dollars up here for the price so it's 60 minus 20 which is 40 all right so that'd be that at a price of four dollars that'd be 60 minus 10 times 4 which is 40 so that'd be 20 and at six dollars 
that's 60 minus 10 times 6. So it'd be 60 minus 60, which is 0, and we can stop there. Uh, so let's plot this new one out, and let's use purple. All right, so at a price of 0, we still want 60, so we know that that's going to still hold. At a price of $2, we're going to want 40. At a price of $4, people are going to want 20. And at a price of $6, people aren't going to want anything. All right, and so this is going to become very important when we start discussing uh, elasticity later on, okay? Because the, the slope of a curve tells us a lot about the product, all right? And we're not going to get into that here. That's not the purpose of this. But so you can see, what if this number went instead of 5, let's say it goes to 2, you know, 60 minus 2p or not 2p? That's the question. Uh, so if, if this goes to 2, we would expect this to get a lot steeper. All right. And so that's it for this one. Uh, so just to, to, to review, uh, this is the demand function. And here's how we plot it out. QD equals A minus BP. The A is the x-intercept. The B is the slope. This tells us it's downward. And this is the price that we plug in. We take this formula. And so once we get a formula, like that, we, I just made this one up, uh, 60 minus 5p, we just plug these numbers in, so we plugged in a 0 for the price, and so that gave us a uh, quantity demanded of 60, plugged in 2 for the price, gave us 50, and it's got us this first demand curve. And then we manipulated the x-intercept, and we got a curve that was parallel, just to the left, so if this number, if this number goes down, it's going to shift to the left. If the number goes up, it'll shift to the right. And we also manipulated the slope and learned that if this number is increasing, the slope becomes flatter. And if this number is decreasing, this is going to get, it's going to get a lot steeper. All right. So uh, until next time.